downtown Detroit. Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. For the first time since mid-January, we are dealing with some wet and heavy snow. Thanks so much for joining us. For First at Four, I'm Karen Drew. Looking out across Metro Detroit, every shot from Ann Arbor to Southfield, one thing is in common, you can't see the grass. Now, while things are calming down in the lower half of the state right now, flakes have been falling for hours and causing some major headaches for residents. Some locations on the west side of the state, like Muskegon, could see a daily snowfall record. This is a live look at the USS Silverside Submarine Museum in Muskegon County, where right now for March 22nd, the record is seven inches and that could be beaten by day's end. It is more of the same in Fruitport, where you can see residents are dealing with the snow piling up and piling up quickly. They won't get relief for another few hours. Closer to home in Livingston County, Bob sent us this my pick of his backyard over in Heartland, where he measured four and a half inches of snow on the ground, and that was by noon. Cindy sent us this my pick from Marine City of the whiteout conditions on the St. Clair River. That was a little bit earlier today. It's no secret, today's storm is also impacting the roads. The evening commute could still be slow for drivers in northern Oakland County, as well as Macomb and Livingston counties. But along M59, the roads are pretty clear. So let's check in with Kim Adams. She has been very busy finding out exactly what you can expect over the next few hours. Some neighborhoods, though, are not in the clear yet. No, it's those secondary roads in your neighborhoods that will be very slushy tonight. But we are getting a break, as we expected, just in time for the evening commute. So those main roads are pretty clear. It's the secondary neighborhood roads that are still covered with that snow. It's cold. 34 in Detroit, 30 in Howell, 28 in Pontiac. As we look at Exact Track 40 radar, you can see to the north here, there's that band of snow still north of I-69. So much of Metro Detroit is dry. But a winter weather advisory remains in effect until midnight tonight for Livingston, Oakland, and Macomb counties and up into the thumb. But the rest of Metro Detroit no longer under that winter weather advisory, including the city of Detroit. So here's the timeline. Between now and 7 o'clock, mainly dry, just a few flurries. Then 7 to 11, we get another round of scattered snow showers. Not much, but enough to possibly coat the ground again with about a half inch, maybe as much as an inch in the northern suburbs. And then after 11 o'clock, we dry out and set ourselves up for a pretty nice weekend again, but a little bit cold. Now let's check in with Paula. And Paula, I know you're out and about on the roads right now. Have plows and salt trucks uh, been able to clear the way for you? Oh my goodness, yes. They've been doing a yeoman's job and a wonderful job at that. So let me just give you a sense of where we are right now. Obviously, I'm not driving. I'm on the right side of the vehicle, but my buddy Tim Pamplin is on the left. And so we, it should, this is actually more like live ride instead of live drive. But let's go to the roads right now so you can see what we're seeing. So this is M59. We are in Waterford. We are moving towards Pontiac. You can see how clear it is. And so we're used to this. This is no great shakes. However, I do want to show you some video of, we've been driving around all day. Take a look at what we saw earlier. And this is what a lot of people were dealing with. We were dealing with near whiteout conditions in some places and really, really rough snow, slow go sl uh, snow. And it was really, really tough. Again, depending on where you are, but that is really cleared out quite a bit. Kim talked about what's going on south. Let me take you a little bit north because if you have friends or family members, or if you are getting ready to go north, uh, 69, that east-west freeway, that is pretty much the line of demarcation. Mother Nature is coloring within the lines, and it is very, very snowy up there. Kind of the stuff that we are showing you, that uh, we are showing you right now, back on the road right now, but what we were showing you earlier. And so if you're going north, and if you're going to be up in that area, do understand that you could get some hazardous driving conditions. Again, in our viewing area, where we are right now, moving east from Waterford into Pontiac, we're not seeing bad driving conditions at all. We know that we're expecting more nuisance snow this evening. So now is the time to run out and get your grocery shopping done, errands run, uh, going to dinner, whatever you need to do, get it done now before that nuisance snow comes back. Because right now, 
optimal driving conditions, guys. All right, we appreciate it, Paula. Okay to move around here, but um, a lot of folks, I, I don't know if you noticed on your social media feed, do you see all those families that were posting pictures today? I can't, Spring break, I, we're headed out. I can't look at Facebook I on know. days like today because everyone's got their suitcases. Yeah, place. look and at that. It's for them, right? Yeah, that was one I local know. family. I think they were headed to Hilton Head, so I guess that brings uh, me to, okay, we're talking local roads, but then there are the road, the road trippers. They're headed to Florida, they're holding yes. the Carolinas. I mean, how is travel for that? Uh, rain, not Okay. snow. So That's it could good. be a lot worse. But as we look at the national map, you can see we are getting the snow north of I-69. There's that swath. Uh, if you're headed up north or over to Chicago, you'll hit the snow. Once you get past Metro Detroit and you get across that Ohio border, you'll run into rain. Then you'll get another break. And then as you head down uh, I-75 through the Kentucky and Tennessee valleys, you'll get another break. But there are showers and thunderstorms in Georgia that are going to be rather heavy tonight. And those showers also continue in parts of South Florida, where they've had as much as six inches wow. of rain. Big travel day. All right. Thank you, Kim. We'll check back with you for local situations. We also want to remind everybody, you can submit photos and videos of your snow in your neighborhood on our My Picks page. We really want to hear from you. All you have to do is head to the clickondetroit.com slash mypicks, or you can scan the QR code on your screen, and that'll take you there right now. Kate, the Princess of Wales, just announced she has cancer, breaking her silence and months of speculation on her whereabouts and her health after going through some serious abdominal surgery in January. Our Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom with her stunning announcement. Kim? The news was delivered by Kate herself, revealing she's recovering well from her surgery but now needs to undergo treatment for cancer. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can Kate imagine, is 42 time. years old. She did not say what specific type of cancer she's battling. The prince has asked for space and privacy as she undergoes chemotherapy and focuses on healing and her family. The news is no doubt devastating for the royal family. You may remember King Charles is also currently undergoing treatment for an unspecified cancer. Thanks, Kim. Now to some breaking news out of Russia this afternoon, where police say 40 people died and more than 100 were wounded in a terror attack at a Moscow concert hall this evening. We're told several gunmen burst into the concert hall on the edge of Moscow and then sprayed visitors with automatic gunfire before starting a massive fire. Video posted on social media shows huge plumes of black smoke rising over the building, which can accommodate more than 6,000 people. As of right now, no one has claimed responsibility for that attack. Tonight, Detroit police are answering our questions about a heartbreaking story that we broke Thursday at 5. This little girl named Harmony Henderson has just had just turned three years old, but last weekend, Harmony did not survive massive injuries. Police say it came at the hands of a trusted family babysitter. Aisha Harris is now charged with the three-year-old's murder for pouring scalding water on Harmony and then hitting her head against a bathtub. Services for Harmony were this afternoon. Rashad Trice will be sentenced on July 19th after admitting in federal court today he kidnapped and strangled two-year-old Winter Cole Smith. Oh, that was the scene when they apprehended him. We've been on the case from the beginning, as you recall. Trice's crime spree crisscrossed the state, sparked an extensive manhunt and prosecution that initially exposed the Detroit man to the federal death penalty. Now, while the death penalty is no longer on the table, the 27-year-old could still be sentenced to life in prison. Trice also is facing homicide charges in state court. Lansing's chief of police, Ellery Sosby, released this statement about the guilty plea today, saying, quote, my hope is this will give Winter's family, friends, and all of the law enforcement partners who were and are still affected by this tragedy a sense of closure. So Metro Detroiters losing thousands of dollars in a scam that's preying on emotion, also targeting DTE customers. Our Help Me Hank spoke to one and has the warning for you. There's an elaborate DTE cash spoofing scam affecting people all over the city. Take a look. Earlier today, I was in Wayne Washington's East Side Barbershop. He was targeted, told to pay thousands or the power would be cut off. They knew too much information. It was unbelievable. 
So today I'm at DTE. We are working to come to the rescue and also providing important information for you tonight live at 6 o'clock so you don't get taken. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, Hank. Within the last two hours, the House of Representatives approved key spending bills that are now heading to the Senate. Take a live look at the U.S. Capitol building, where a deadline to avoid a weekend government shutdown is looming. Top lawmakers on both sides of the aisle say they are pushing to prevent a shutdown. But the objection of any single senator could delay a swift vote, pushing the chamber right up against or even past that deadline. Now, if the Senate does not pass a bill before midnight, that deadline, a temporary lapse in funding would take place, triggering a part partial shutdown and a slate of critical government operations, including the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Labor and others would shut down. There is a sentiment to try for a number of reasons, personal and political, to get the job done before midnight. There needs to be amendments. Uh, you know that's going to happen. No one practical wants a government shutdown, so I hope we will avoid it. Now, we're going to keep, obviously, a close eye on the Senate vote, bring you an update as soon as that spending bill is either passed or rejected.